Hello, I'm with Jeff Lissandro, another breakout gaming teammate and longtime friend. Uh, Jeff, you have a near unprecedented six WSOP bracelets on three continents, right? Also, 2009 WSOP Player of the Year. Quite impressive, quite impressive. So, you are an international poker player. Can you tell us about poker in other continents and the influence you've had on them in basically creating a poker environment? Yeah, well, in 1994, when poker wasn't so uh, popular, I did a lot, I visited 12 countries in Europe and um, they had various uh, poker tournaments. It was a bit of a circuit. And, you know, about roughly 50, 60 players were turning up. Um, the prize pools weren't that big. But the love of the game, I, I just cruised around, visited these countries, did a bit of uh, tourism, and played in these tournaments. I think I did really good. It was like 94. I think I won like six of these tournaments. <laughs> uh, Slovenia, Ireland, Austria, um, Prague, Paris, uh, Amsterdam and a, a, a few more but the expenses of doing the of traveling all those different countries really took its toll as, as successful as I was um, a lot of my money was being eaten up in the expenses and um, the prize pools weren't that really big those days of course. it was a great tour I had a, a it was so exciting visiting these countries and playing poker but in all realistic, um, my expenses were astronomical. So it was really hard to say. <laughs> I, did, I did actually make money that year, but my expenses were like, I was probably the most successful player and my expenses were like 80% of what I won. <laughs> but it was still fun, I'm it sure. Was, um, it was great. <laughs> but in all real, reality, um, I looked at all the numbers, what I was spending on hotels and traveling, and currency exchange and um, I wasn't gonna, I, if I was only 80% successful the next year, I'd be losing money. <laughs> yeah. So you um, had a big influence obviously in Europe. What about Russia? Well, in 1995, um, there was massive casinos in Moscow and there were so many, um, players who enjoyed intellectual games and poker just really fitted in with what they wanted to play. So I went to Moscow and I approached a few of these um, major casinos and I spoke to them about poker, running a poker, American style poker. And they said, absolutely no one will play, no one knows how to play. And I said, well, if you could give me six months, uh, I can change that. I think we'll build a massive poker player base beyond belief. Mm. And they were laughing at me saying, we don't believe it. And after six months, I proved my point. We had one or 2,000 players on a regular basis. And I set up oh, three wow. poker rooms at the same time. And uh, it was a, and then of course other, po other casinos followed suit and became competition, but the player base was astronomical. I um, remember talking to you years ago and you telling me that, and I told you you were out of your mind and you kind of like laughed in my face and said, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And uh, in 1999, I set up Moscow's first major tournament, um, international poker tournament. And the casino said, how are you gonna get people to come? And I said, everyone wants to see Moscow. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they need a visa and it's so hard and okay, I, I set up an office, I put um, two assistants there and we organized 200 people uh, visas. It was a, a mammoth job. Uh, but every one of those 200 just went around the world speaking how great of the opinion of Moscow was. And the tournament never looked back. I mean, there was just, after that, there was four or five major tournaments in Moscow and I would say 
Moscow was probably the number one or two destination for poker in Europe, even oh, though wow. even though a lot of people probably didn't know that. Hmm. But the poker was so big, the games were so big, uh, the tournaments were so successful, and the smart people kept coming, you know, from other parts of Europe there, and they loved it at the time of their life. Hmm. So, being such a well-traveled international poker player, frequently when I'm playing, we talk about a player's style or whatever, and I know the connotation to me, they say, well, the, he's a European poker player. Can you contrast the difference between poker styles throughout the geographical areas you've been to? Well, uh, yeah, there's uh, quite a quite a bit, bit of difference. I mean, the main game in Europe is um, Omaha. Mm. And um, no limit, they play very few limit games, which is, which is sad. Um, <laughs> because actually, um, they don't have the experience to run them. Uh, uh. Uh, I think the Americans do a better job with the limit games. So that you, you get a lot of new poker directors into the poker scene and they, they have their credentials as experience. But if you would ask them to run some sort of limit tournament, they, would <laughs> run, they would, probably wouldn't be able to accommodate you. Wow. They would say the dealers don't know the games or whatever. So they, they basically they focus on, the, on Omaha and No Limit Hold'em, whereas there's probably a little difference in America. Yeah. All right. Being a partner in Breakout Gaming, you have a handful of coins. What do you plan on doing with them? Well, I, uh, I'm excited. I, I, I would like to use them, <laughs> of course. I um, mean, I'm spending like the biggest expense for me on doing my yearly travels is um, currency exchange. I visit four or five different nations. I'm moving my bank roll around. And every time I do that, buy in and, and cash out, I'm losing three, four percent. And I've added it up on the end of the year, it's a, it's a lot of money. So if there's some way that I can play poker off, off one bank without having to continually exchange it, um, I'd, I'd risk that, I'd risk that. I think, you know, that's worth a shot. That'd be great for all poker players. And I imagine, you know, most of the Europeans would know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Good. Well, for your information, you already know this, but it was just wondering. Uh, on June 13th, we're going to have a coin sale. You think you're going to participate? Absolutely. Good. Well, I know congratulations on making it to day two, and I hate to cut this off because I know we could sit here and talk for hours about what you have done in this poker world, what you can and will do in the poker world, and your future success in tournaments and everything else and not, not to mention your live games. But I know you made it to day two and you gotta get out of here. So thank you for your time, Jeff. Thanks, Randy.